Good day, one Fly Squad. Welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Frankfurt Airport. I just got off a plane from London Heathrow. You can check that trip report out. I'll have the link in the description down below. And now I'm gonna fly to Tokyo Haneda on Lufthansa again, Airbus A340-300 in economy. Uh, before the flight, I can have access to the Star Alliance lounges here at Frankfurt, including four or five Lufthansa lounges and the uh, Air Canada Maple Leaf one. I'm now gonna go check out the Air Canada one. Let's come join me. My flight from London arrived at Concourse B here at Frankfurt Airport and the Air Canada Maple Leaf is also located in Concourse B. So it's just a short walk to the lounge. It's located upstairs here in Concourse B. The airport doesn't seem very busy today, but all the shops and restaurants are back in business. It's now 2 p.m. and this lounge closes at 3, so we'll spend just an hour here. After that, we'll move on to the Lufthansa lounges. Upon entering the Maple Leaf, your friendly Air Canada receptionist is going to ask for your vaccination status. You'll need three doses to get in. If you've only had two, like myself, two doses plus a COVID test is good enough. So once I entered, I noticed how calm and quiet this lounge is. Everybody speaks very quietly, there's no music playing at all. I like how this lounge has plenty of different sitting options, including lounge chairs. Buffet is available in this lounge, including your alcohol selection. There's always a staff standing near the buffet to help you should you need any assistance. So earlier I was looking for some sparkling water, but everything was in German. The staff saw that I was confused and offered to help me. So here's the food and drinks I'm having in this lounge. A very delicious soup, pretzel, a cup of tea, tiramisu, sparkling water, along with a tarmac view. I've never really had German pretzel before, so I was really excited. This soup, I think chicken soup it was, was absolutely delicious and full of ingredients. So good. Now let's try the tiramisu. There are several shower suites here in the Air Canada lounge, but in my opinion it's a bit dark, although everything else looks great. I always appreciate the shower head on the ceiling. So the Air Canada lounge just closed at 3, so now I have to move on to the Z gate area. Uh, that's where my flight to Tokyo is going to depart anyway, and there's going to be another lounge there. Um, apparently I have to take a skyline there, which is a bus. We'll see. I just went downstairs, but apparently it's actually upstairs where I was. So, walking to the Z gate now, it's a very long walkway. Don't know when it'll end. So as I said earlier, for my connection to Tokyo, there's no need for immigration and custom, but you'll need to go through a security screening. There's not many people here, but the line was really slow moving. It took about 10 minutes to get through. After that, you'll be greeted by the airport duty free. Einstein just scared me because I thought he was real and alive. Good day, mate. Um... So right now, I'm in the Lufthansa Senator Lounge in the Z Gate area. There are two lounges here, the business lounge and the senator. The business lounge was closed, so they sent everyone to the better senator lounge, or better known as the Star Alliance Gold Lounge. And again, you'll need three doses, or two doses plus a COVID test to get in. I had a small conversation with the receptionist here. She told me that it's really quiet and they closed down the other lounge because of the low demand recently due to the Omicron outbreak. And even some of her colleagues in the lounge caught COVID so they were isolating and she was actually the only receptionist working during that day. So compared to the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge, this is so much bigger but that makes sense because Frankfurt is Lufthansa's main base. Just like the Maple Leaf Lounge, there's buffet and self-serve alcohol. Although this Senator Lounge is much bigger than the Maple Leaf Lounge, it hasn't really lost that cosy vibe. I think that's partly due to the low number of passengers here. The food offered here is actually quite similar to the Maple Leaf Lounge. I wouldn't be surprised if they've got the same supplier. Oh my god, this is chaotic. 
So this is where I'm chilling today and the food, I'm just having some fruits and tea. I ate enough in London and also in the Maple Leaf Lounge. That's our aircraft later to Tokyo, a A340 in a new livery. I've not flown the Airbus A340 for over seven years, so I'm really excited. Last time it was a Cathay A340-300 from Hong Kong to Amsterdam, and that was a couple years before I started my channel. That A340 in a Starlines livery has just arrived from San Jose, Costa Rica. Here's me eating a banana and watching planes. So I was hoping to shower here before my flight, however there's a wait list, so I didn't bother. I'm now slowly walking to my gate Z50 for Tokyo Haneda. So here's the legendary A340 that's going to fly us to Tokyo. This aircraft is only 16 days younger than me, so very young and immature. It's a 22 year old Lufthansa A340-300 Delta Alpha India Golf uniform. At the boarding gate, it takes quite a while because they want to check your vaccination status and all the documents needed for your final destination. In this instance, they want to check my Australian travel declaration, my COVID test, my vaccination status, and of course my passport. Okay, your final destination, Sydney. Sydney. Then have to see the boarding pass to Sydney, the travel declaration, and the After your documents have been checked, you can board the aircraft. Welcome on board Lufthansa A340-300. This aircraft offers business class premium economy and economy. My seat today is 27k. Economy class is laid out in a standard 242 configuration. The whole boarding process is really slow and dead. People are boarding one by one due to the document checks. On your seat you'll find a blanket and a pillow. I'll now go through the seat features with you. So in front of you, you've got a touchscreen TV with a USB port and headphone jack. Cut hook. On the back of the tray table, you'll find a cup holder, and this is the tray table itself. You can't fold it, but you can move it back and forth. Down there, you've got a very standard seat bucket. Your leg room is pretty standard as well, about 32 inches. Underneath your seat, you'll find a power socket and you share it with your neighbor. Finally, every seat comes with a headrest. The headrest is soft in the middle and firm on the sides where you lean on, which I really like. Boarding is completed. Our flight to Tokyo today is about 5 to 10% full. Thank you. The lovely cabin crew member just gave us a earphone and a hand wipe. There's no full divider between economy and premium economy class. Not sure if I'll like that if I'm sitting in premium. Announcements on this aircraft are made in Japanese, German and English. The cabin crew have deemed the cabin light but they left the light on above the Lufthansa logo and it looks gorgeous.
Now that we've taken off from Frankfurt, I'll show you the entertainment options on board today's flight to Tokyo. So your most predominant option would be the TV right in front of you. You've got a selection of documentaries, TV shows and movies to choose from. There's a non-interactive flight map available and the language is switched in between English, German and Japanese. Wi-Fi is available also, but it comes with a price. The cheapest plan starts at 7 euros and the most expensive comes at 29 euros for the entire flight. There are no in-flight magazines on today's flight. The cabin crew just switched on the cabin lights and it hurt my eyes a bit. Hello, welcome to Lofthansa A340, 300 economy class lavatory. It's just a roll behind my seat 26. Uh, it's just a standard lavatory with lots of tissues. There's a AC vent, cut hook number one. Number two. And of course the toilet, uh, the toilet itself. I accidentally squirted too much soap from the bottle and it looks like something else. And now I got back to my seat, I took off my socks and I put on my hotel slippers. And I'm already wearing my PJs since my flight from London. The in-flight service now begins with drinks first. I just went for a cup of sparkling water. Other complimentary drinks include red wine, white wine, coffee and tea, juices and soft drinks. Moments later, the cabin crew came back to offer us dinner. Buy and bought is available if you want some fancy drinks and snacks after your meal. You'll find a menu in your seat pocket. The items are quite pricey, so I'm not going for it. It's worth noting that there's a section specifically for Japanese fruits only. You can pay with your credit cards, PayWave and even Apple Pay. Are you going to stay in Japan? Uh, no, Australia. Australia, okay good for you, let's pay for work. <laughs> so just now that was the purser giving out the Japanese arrival cards and forms. There's a lot now to do if you land into Japan due to other COVID documents that you need to fill in. So here's my dinner. Only one option is available today. Just a minute later, another cabin crew came by the aisle to give us more drinks. This time I went for a white wine. That was unexpected. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anything else? Some coffee or tea? Uh, can I have a tea? I really appreciate how the cabin crew even asked if we wanted more things after she gave us drinks. So here's the dinner, let's have a look. So it's a vegetarian lasagna with metal cutlery, a big bowl of salad, a brownie, cheese, and lots of drinks I got. White wine, sparkling water, tea with milk. Overall, looking really good. The lasagna is really good, but I think the portion is a bit small. It's really cheesy. And I figured out it's probably easier to have that salad when I mix it with the cheese because by itself it's a bit bland and I don't really like the Italian dressing. Here's the white wine. Again, red and white wines are free. However, you have to pay for any other alcoholic beverages. Now let's try the brownie. It looks really good. It is indeed really good. Even better if we had ice cream. Lastly, we had a bun along with brie cheese and butter. Honey had the cheese itself. After a while, the cabin crew came back to give out large bottles of water to everybody. The crew now come back to collect rubbish and meal trays. Overall, a very pleasant meal on board Lufthansa today. The service was also really quick thanks to the empty flight and that also maximised our sleeping hours on this flight to Tokyo. Next is to lie down in the middle. I got all four seats for myself. So on Manage My Booking, I was offered to upgrade to Premium Economy for £100 or Business Class for £300 and I was like, why bother because I'm going to get a flat bid to Tokyo anyway in Economy and those doors, sorry, those seats here, they kind of act like a door which Lofthansa Business doesn't have. So we've got about 10 hours to go, it's going to be a very good night's sleep. About halfway through the flight, or four hours later, I woke up to a bleeding nose. 
The cabin on older aircraft tend to be dry as well, so please always remember to drink water, hydrate yourself when you fly long haul, especially on an old aircraft like this A340. Currently we would be flying over Russia and the total flying time would be about 11 hours. However, since the Ukraine war has begun, the total flying time has extended for another hour because the Russian airspace is now a no-go zone for European airlines. And now this service would fly over a large chunk of continental Europe, Mongolia, China and South Korea. I woke up several times during the flight to use the bathroom and now I'm having this mandarin that I stole from the lounge. If you want snacks midway through the flight, it's buy on board. I look pathetically tired here, oh my god. Still quite a long way to go but the sun has started to rise. I just went to the galley to ask for a cup of tea, which is complimentary, and I got a pack of nuts that I stole from the hotel. It's interesting, so I got this business traveller magazine from the London Lofthansa Lounge and there's an article about the Lufthansa service in economy and they're complaining about the economy service right now, how little they're offering in terms of food and beverages and for short haul flights there's zero entertainment. So I have a little story to share, so I was eating my peanuts and reading my magazine, um, I've got my mask right here, and then um, when I stood up ready to go to the lavatory, I was like, oh no, where's my mask? I was looking up and down uh, through the seat pockets. Oh, it's right here, in my chin. We're now flying over the northern parts of China and you can see the contrail from one of the four engines. Just a short while before the breakfast service has begun, most people have actually woken up already. And like myself, a lot of people did actually move to the middle seats to sleep. And now people are having their window blinds up, enjoying the gorgeous view outside the window. The cabin crew members are officially back in the aisle to offer us breakfast. Unlike the dinner service, they jump straight to the food. The offering this time is smaller. And again, there's only one option. On long haul Lufthansa economy class, they no longer serve a full second meal, which is really sad to be honest. However, this is not too bad. The wrap was really tasty, I got a yogurt. Originally I got a pineapple flavour, which I really don't like, so I politely asked the cabin crew if they had another flavour and they happily changed it for me. So portion wise this would be perfect for me because I had something mid-flight that I brought onto the aircraft but if someone didn't do that or they didn't do the buy on board they would be left starving for sure. At the end of the day it's now 1pm in Tokyo and this is just their breakfast. I really do hope one day Lufthansa would bring back a full second meal on long haul flights. We've now started our descent into Tokyo Haneda Airport, so let's quickly conclude our trip report with Lufthansa A340 right here, right now. So my journey for this particular flight started at the Air Canada Lounge. They checked my vaccination status. The staff were really friendly and helpful. The food was really good and overall a very pleasant lounge experience. And then moving on to the Zayat Gate area, there was a Lufthansa Senator Lounge, which was really close to our boarding gate, just about two minutes walk. It was really quiet there, really deserted. I wouldn't say both lounges were amazing or made me say wow, 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 but they were both really good up to the standard that you would expect for a business class lounge. Both lounges do offer a great tarmac view if you do care about that. Do arrive earlier to your gate now when you fly Lufthansa or international flights in general because they do check your documents for your final destination at the boarding gate. 
The whole boarding process today was really slow, but I wouldn't complain because it's not really Lufthansa's fault. Every country has different requirements and Lufthansa is the one who has to check it. And stricter checking is better than getting stranded halfway through your connection. Upon boarding the aircraft, a very friendly Japanese crew welcomed me on board in Japanese. She must have thought I was a Japanese person. I said arigato back so I was convinced that she thought I was Japanese. The seats and the cabin itself were both really clean and spotless which I really liked. Like if you look at the screen you won't see any fingerprints from your previous passengers. For the wet towelette that they give out please don't use it on your skin especially your face because they're really strong for alcohol and they're only meant for cleaning the surfaces like your seat. In terms of the food service I really liked the food it was delicious however portion wise I do hope that the breakfast was bigger and I was a bit disappointed to find out that spirits are no longer complimentary in economy class. All the cabin crew today were really friendly and helpful. They always asked if you wanted more drinks but I always politely declined after having three cups of liquid for the dinner service alone. I do however have to mention as an aviation blogger they never came through the aisle at all. During mid-flight to for example give out water or juices you will have to go to the galley yourself or get their attention by pressing that bell button. So overall I really did enjoy this Lufthansa flight to Tokyo and I'm sure most economy passengers have as well due to the MT flight we all could sleep in the middle with full seats. Actually when I arrived in the Tokyo I overheard some premium passengers telling people that they were offered to downgrade to economy so that they could lie down which was really hilarious. Flaps are getting down so we're getting close to Haneda Airport. For your information, I paid £540 for this one-way journey from London to Sydney via Frankfurt and Tokyo. Thank you so much for watching and if you're new to my channel, I upload a new trip report every Thursday 12pm Hong Kong time. That would be 1pm in Tokyo, 5 in the morning every Thursday in Germany. So be sure to click that subscribe and bell button so every time when I upload you'll get notified right away and you're not missing out on another trip report of mine. You can always keep up to date with me on Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. I also offer memberships on YouTube, Patreon and you can do one of payments on PayPal. I would like to thank you everyone who is a Patreon or YouTube member and to those who have ever made a payment on my PayPal me. Life is a little bit difficult at the moment in Adelaide due to the housing crisis. I've been moving around places for the past two months and your support is allowing me to travel regularly and follow my dreams even during this tougher times. Thanks again for watching, now please enjoy the landing and approach into Haneda Airport. Another Fiji vlog it's gonna follow after the disembarking.
There were about 10 passengers on this aircraft flying onwards to Sydney on ANA. Due to quarantine and COVID testing, they asked those who are connecting to leave the aircraft first. So in last week's vlog, I told you guys that I was going to go to Cloud9 today. And in this vlog, I'm going to show you Cloud9. So first of all, we made our way to Port Denaru, which is not too far from our hotel, just a five minute drive. Then we joined a full fleet of Aussie tourists to a boat. It's about 45 minutes to get to Cloud9. There it is, it's basically a floating bar in the middle of the ocean. Thank you. Oh my god, look at the water. Thank you so much. <laughs> So for drinks there's plenty of alcohol, for food there's wood oven pizza. There's also two decks here. That's me! After about 4 hours, unfortunately, it's time to head back to the mainland of Fiji. Getting ready for a massage. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching once again. See you next week for another Fiji vlog. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off.